tourist, he had broken through already at the grade one level, but to be able to break through at that level in front of uh, all the breeders at the Breeders' Cup was substantial for him. So he ran in the Breeders' Cup mile three years in a row, which is quite impressive as well. For him to retain that form over three long seasons of racing is uh, quite an accomplishment, and I think that's something that a lot of breeders need to take notice of. He's thrown uh, horses that, that kind of represent him. They all got a little bit of flash. They're nice, strong horses. They got plenty of bone. They have nice muscle to them. So we're, we're pretty excited about the yearlings that are gonna be showing up at the sales here. The beautiful thing about him is it's a dirt pedigree, and he, but he also did some of his best running on the turf. That versatility, especially in the American market now, that where it's almost 50-50 uh, turf and dirt racing, uh, we wouldn't expect him to only throw turf. I think he'll also be able to throw high-level dirt horses. So having that versatility is going to really open him up for every region of racing here in America. He was a, quite an interesting profile, being Uncle Mo's very first ever winner, going four and a half furlongs in the spring at Keeneland, and then to go on and be a grade one winner at a mile and an eighth as a three-year-old is, is quite an accomplishment. We're really looking forward to seeing him pass on that early speed that he had, and watching his offspring probably mature and being able to go that route of ground and carry that speed. That's what we would expect. He's, he's a big, beautiful horse. He stands about 17 hands, very well balanced, uh, very much like his sire. Being able that he was that big and, and that fast early gives us a lot of excitement for the future with his offspring. I would think you would, you would qualify him as stamping his, his stock. They stand over plenty of ground. They all have lots of leg, just like he does. They're nice, free-moving horses, very intelligent horses. And I think a lot of pin hookers and buyers at the, uh, the sales this fall noticed that and uh, were supportive of them at the sales. Quite a few people are very excited to be able to present these horses at the upcoming sales. Spicer was a homebred. From the beginning, he was always one of the best horses in his crop that we had here, uh, and that's why we chose to keep him. Uh, he also had the pedigree to support that as well. You know, he's from seven individual racing champions as well as champion sire Smart Strike. We're very excited about that depth of pedigree that he brings. He was a horse that had extreme potential and he has one of the best pedigrees in the stud book. Horses that come in at, at that price point, it takes a real groundswell to help support that horse. When we syndicated that horse, we knew that and we got a, a great group of, of syndicate members, real grassroots with them and, and a lot of local breeders um, that produce a lot of really good race horses, good sale horses, and they've supported him very strongly throughout his entire career, not only in years one and two, but have remained supportive of him. So he's a horse that has the numbers to compete with, with the higher stud fee horses. Obviously, he's producing the physicals as well and um, and he had that support from his syndication that is very important to get a horse off on the right foot. Mm -hmm.